me know if you can see the screen, Jose. Everybody in chat, are you yeah, guys able see to see the screen? Yeah, I can see. Perfect. Well, it is. Well, we got one minute. We'll we'll wait one more minute and then we'll get it going again. <clears throat> those of you guys that are in here, uh, those of you guys that have uh, uh, joined us on our previous webinars, appreciate you guys being here as well. Got a really good topic that we're going to be discussing today uh, on HIPAA security uh, uh, workstation use with cell phones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> everybody uses a cell phone these days, right? <laughs> so um, obviously, uh, you know, when we're talking about HIPAA security and dealing with patient health information, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about that and uh, just go over the intricacies with that. And uh, yeah. So, all right, well, it's one thirty-five. Let's uh, let's get it going. Um, again, everybody, I thank you guys for joining in uh, for another edition of our compliance step-by-step -step webinars. Uh, my name is Ray Walters. I will be your host uh, for today's webinar. And uh, again, thrilled to have uh, my co-host today is uh, Mr. Jose Delgado. Uh, Jose has a uh, 17 year, or, well, is it 17 years now? Or are we, are we hitting the two decades? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're hitting the two decades now. Yeah, yeah, That's... yeah, we, yep. And uh, so Jose, he specializes in business development, healthcare management, and consulting. Um, in particular, why I brought him in on this webinar is his latest venture. Actually, he's owning a. He currently owns a mental health uh, telehealth clinic, and uh, I thought this was going to be a good uh, subject to uh, interview with you uh, with. But uh, Jose, if there's anything else you'd like to add, yeah, no. Uh, basically, my background is anything from cradle to the grave in the healthcare industry. And we got into the mental health space in 2019 because we saw the need and mm -hmm. every once in a while, it's always good for us to show that the things we tell our clients to do, we can implement and show value and show that it's, you know, proof of concept for those that are a little bit more visual. So. No, absolutely. And uh, now, Great stuff. And uh, like I said, today's uh, subject, we're going to guide you through the intricacies of HIPAA security and the critical role that uh, workstation use and uh, mobile devices play in healthcare. And uh, before we get started, um, again, those of, you that, those of you that have joined us again, uh, I'm sure you love this uh, this slide at this point. It's on every single presentation that we've had. But before we dive into the specifics, just want to uh, take a moment uh, to let you guys understand what Epi Compliance is. Um, we've we've been established since 2013. Um, we specialize in healthcare compliance, uh, specifically with HIPAA privacy, HIPAA security, OSHA for healthcare, and Medicare waste, fraud, and abuse uh, regulations. Um, our mission is simple. We want to help streamline the compliance process for healthcare organizations, healthcare students, um, and business associates uh, with tailored uh, online solutions. And uh, I always mention this too, Jose. Uh, we founded Epi Conferences as well. Uh, Jose uh, is actually a uh, speaker at our conference. And again, for those of you who are just joined us in, this is an in-person con uh, conference that we, we host. Uh, in particular, uh, out of this conference, we have a HIPAA, uh, HIPAA security officer training. Uh, Jose is actually an instructor of this course. And uh, Jose, I was, I was wondering if you can tell the audience just a little bit more about that course and its benefits. <laughs> Yeah, so basically the CHSO boot camp is uh, eight hours with myself and usually one to two other speakers because let's be honest, we don't want you guys getting too bored. The information is rather dry, but it's all about what it, what is needed to truly understand HIPAA security because it's far more complex than what most people think. Uh, I mean... Just as a quick 101, HIPAA security has three phases of this, right? It has the, sure. the technical section, the administrative section, and the physical section. And everybody knows the physical side. That's easy. Are my doors locked? Are, you know, like, do I have my uh, patient health information secure? The technical and the administrative side is where things get really hairy. And I, interestingly enough, one of those things we're going to be talking about is the cell phones today. So absolutely, and right into the technical side. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, this training, yes, it is currently in person, but this is something that we are going to be offering online here real soon, um, so that you guys can consume it and uh, um, stay tuned on that. Um, we're going to be hopefully releasing on that by the uh, first quarter of next year. Um, so stay tuned, um, and uh, we'll certainly be sending you guys some information on that. Um, so. Let's go ahead and, and, and move forward. So some of the key objectives uh, for today's discussion, we will be discussing, uh, uh, obviously, uh, 
we're going to be talking about understanding uh, secure workstation and mobile device configurations, uh, recognizing user responsibilities with protected health information, uh, complying with the requirements for a secure device use, learning a little bit more about mobile device security and remote desktop services. And last but not least, we want to understand server and network security in the context of PHI. Now, Jose, quick question for you before I get started. I have my Teams meeting open. Are you able, are you seeing yeah, those I chats see that it. are coming up? Okay. Give me <laughs> a second and let me get rid of that. Sorry uh, for the uh, technical difficulties, guys. Give me just a moment. <laughs> I'm going to unshare my screen real quick and we're going to fix that. Sorry about that. Ray, you're still sharing. Oh, am I? Oh, sorry. Let me, uh, let me unshare. Pause. Sorry about that, guys. That was uh, oversight on my end. We're just going to go on sleep mode. I think I got it. Give me just a second. Sorry, guys. Okay, let's go ahead and dive back into it. I think I got it fixed, but if it pops up again, let me know. <laughs> Sorry about okay. that, guys. <laughs> Um, let me know if you can see Jose. Uh, I can see the regular screen. It's not on. Uh, it's not on uh, the presentation side. All right, now we're in presentation. Perfect. Perfect. So, um, so first slide that we want to discuss uh, some of the PHI or patient health information vulnerability vulnerabilities on mobile devices. Um, I mentioned this earlier. Everybody uses cell phones, right? Um, in the practice, outside the practice. But obviously, this comes at risk in healthcare. Um, Jose, could you shed some light on the vulnerabilities yeah, associated absolutely. with this? So, so you you on the slide, you see the most common issues that people would come up with. One of the big ones that's not on here that I see as a larger problem is authorized devices, usually mm -hmm. employee devices, that jump onto a secure network in the office. I like to uh, liken this to when you are a surgeon and you get cleaned up and then you have somebody that comes into this very secure, clean environment just with their clothes from outside, not having washed their hands, not wearing any PPE. It makes the entire room unsecure. It's a dirty, it's a dirty device. So what you want to do as well is make sure that your employees' personal devices are not on the same network as all of your devices that actually have the PHI. Gotcha. So not only are we worried about losing a cell phone or a tablet or logging on to Starbucks or Panera's Wi-Fi, uh, but we're also looking at you know bringing your your the phone that your kid uses to play Roblox or look at Netflix and bringing that into a clean environment. Gotcha, gotcha. So. That kind of dives into this next slide. So given those risks, right, your, you know, child logging in from the from the Starbucks or, um, you yeah. know, you're a you're a practitioner, you're, you know, maybe you're on break, a quick coffee break, you, you know, you, maybe you're logged into your EMR system from your cell phone. So given these risks, uh, you know, what measures should these individuals take to safeguard patient health information when using your mobile device, uh, you know, somewhere out in public? So there's two categories that I like to split these up in mm -hmm. cell phones and then everything else. So let's start with the everything else, your tablets, your laptops, your devices that you're, you're usually able to do work on through your EHR or through some kind of imaging software. If you're a radiologist or something like that, uh, basically what you want to do is make sure that you either have a secure hotspot available for you when you're mobile and you also want to make sure that it's company it's a company owned device that has all of the IT support that your brick and mortar devices have so you know you want to have your antivirus up to date your anti malware up to date 
Um, you want to, I mean, some of these IT services are even providing location services for a device. So if your device does get stolen, they'll be able to track it down with your help. So then that way you can, you can figure out everything that's going on. You can assist the police in recovering the device and figuring out what was accessed. Um, obviously having a strong password on the devices is, is useful as well. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to the cell phone side of things, you have a few more problems. So for example, if a provider is jumping from the office to a nursing home or an office to a surgery center and there's issues in the office, there's how do I, how do I provide the information to the provider in order for them to be able to help with patient services? Sure. So, you know, hey, John Smith called. He needs a refill. You can't put down John Smith, what the refill is for, what the you know, eat, uh, what the pharmacy is, you know, all that fun stuff. So you want to have different ways to communicate that information so that way it's not on that device. You know, you can do things like, hey, your Wednesday at 9 o'clock is asking about a refill. That right. means that they – anybody stealing that phone or spoofing that phone would have to have access also to their clinic calendar to see who that patient was. So you want to make sure that you can um, pass along the information as much as quickly as possible, but in a safe manner as well. Understood. And I know you mentioned uh, as well that, you know, uh, a lot of these MSP services can provide that sort of uh, password uh, protection and, and, and whatnot. So um, I'd say that's definitely an important note to take, you know, if you're, if you're a healthcare uh, business owner, you know, and, you know, you might not currently uh, consult with an IT company on these things, you know, might be definitely worth looking into. That's, that's where they're here to help. Absolutely. So <clears throat> uh, moving on, uh, so securing PHI on mobile devices, some useful tips. Um, you know, we don't have to run through every single one of these, Jose, but uh, out of this list, uh, could you share some, you know, uh, maybe some of the most useful tips that you would recommend? Yeah, um, so uh, some of these are rather interesting, right? Because we, we've already discussed a couple of them. Exactly. When we talk about wiping or remote disabling, this is if you were never going to be able to recover the device because it's lost for whatever reason and... That's a very convenient tool, but it's also a great tool for when you have employee turnover. So some some practices like ours over at Panacea Alliance, we will have uh, some employees that have portable devices. Mm -hmm. Well, if they leave, I need to get that portable device back. I need to get it wiped clean back to factory settings and then, uh, and then I sign it out to the next employee. But I want to make sure that each time that's done, that the device is wiped mm -hmm. because some, it may be going to an employee in a different department and they may not need the patient information that's on there already. And so you want to make sure that each employee has the least amount of patient information possible. So if it's something that does not require what sure. they do for work, there's no reason for them to even have access to it. Um, a lot of the EHRs won't have that kind of uh, security levels for certain aspects, but it's something that we always like to do. Um, installing and activating encryption, that's always nice. On the device side of things, it may be a little bit excessive, but for something like emails, that's absolutely worth it. You know, being unable to access your work emails with work with uh, patient information on your cell phone, probably not a good idea. Sure. You know, you want to have a device that you can access that information. Now, Again, there are certain there's certain issues with HIPAA when it comes to at what point is this completely impossible to work with and to do the job that you need to do. But that's where I would definitely recommend either speaking to a consultant or a healthcare attorney to assess the risk of your practice. If you're a one doc, two doc shop, primary care, pediatrics, yeah, your risk is going to be different than somebody who's a pain management provider or an orthopedic surgeon or even in uh, a psychiatrist psychologist like like what we have to deal with over at panacea but it's all about understanding where our risk points are mm -hmm. so that way we can uh, properly assess it with the resources that we have available to us i'll throw out another uh, tip as well um 
and you might, you know, you kind of, you, you kind of mentioned it, but you know, obviously having, having one of your employees or your medical, let's just say medical assistant for all intents and purposes, they're logged into the EMR system. And let's just say they forgot to log out, right? Is there automatic log off features uh, implemented on that application? Um, so most of, uh, how can I put this? Most of the EHR billing applications currently on the market have an automatic uh, uh, automatic kickout feature. Right. What that time is can be affected, I believe, on the administrative side, if not mm -hmm. on the setup side of things. Now, when it comes to your laptops, your cell phones, your tablets, that's something on the hardware side that you can also address that with. When it comes to password authentication, depending on the philosophy of your IT, they're going to come up with two different answers. Mm -hmm. One, you're going to alternate it every 90 days. And right. when that happens, I've seen it a hundred times. You literally have these employees that have a little sticky note and they alternate between four to 10 different passwords that they just go through every 90 days. I know that the VA has a system where you have to switch it every 90 days it cannot be the same password as six or seven of the previous passwords. So you would literally have employees having the same password, just changing one number, and they just go back and forth, back and forth, one through eight, and then they just start it all over again. And that's, so, that sticky note is on the monitor as well. Oh, of course, it's <laughs> yeah. on the monitor. It's in the drawer. It's on the keyboard underneath the keyboard. You know, like it's right. So is it useful? Kind of. And then the other philosophy is, no, forget about it. It is one extremely strong password, and you never change that sucker. But when I say a strong password, it is a random combination of letters, numbers, numbers. caps sensitive Absolutely. with different, um, not, um, different um, characters, characters on there as well. And this thing is like 12 characters long. So, you know, you can't memorize it even if you wanted to. So oh, yeah. it really is a matter of what are we doing? How intense is this? And what fits the practice? You know, some if I'm a billing department in a hospital, I'm going to have a different risk management um, profile than, like I said, a small practice. Um, even if I'm even within a small practice, different people are going to have a different risk profile. Sure. Your billing person is going to have a different risk profile than someone in the um, what I jokingly call in my office the bullpen. You know, where you have the the front desk person along with the MAs all getting prepped and moving around. You know, so it's it's really just assessing the risk. No, good point, and that's sort of dovetails into this next slide you know in terms of let's just call it a baseline uh, if hipaa security mm -hmm. in terms of what policies as a, let's just say you're a healthcare organization what are sort of the baseline policies you have to have in place you know in this regard in terms of um mobile devices so in office you know, so you have two two options, in office and out of office. If I'm in office, you want to basically have two sets of Wi-Fi. One is for the guests, if you want to offer it to the guests. Mm -hmm. But this Wi-Fi is also for your employees' personal devices. This way on their lunch break, they can look at Instagram, they can look at TikTok, they can go on Facebook, and they can go do that to their heart's content. But because they're siloed away, we still have the clean room for all of the work devices that are on there your um your printer scanner fax machine your uh all of your all of your computers your laptops all of your um if you have radiology in the office because i know some of these x-rays and mris now they'll automatically upload it to an uh, to the ehrs like it's mm -hmm. it's getting wild but you have two different setups there and then you have the out of office where you either have a hotspot or if your phone is enabled, you can use your personal phone as the hotspot to have it as a secure area. But then your laptop is the one that you're actually doing the um, doing the work on. So this way, you 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 know you again you mitigate the the risks. Sure. So um, then you always always want to have password protected devices just to log on to the password uh, log on to the computer. Um, you want to limit the kinds of things that you're downloading and keeping onto your computer. So, 
you know, I, oh yeah, I've received my fax, my fax to email. Perfect. So did you download that, that fax, the, that original fax that's now an email onto your desktop? Yeah, it's on my desktop. It's on my download folder. Perfect. How often are we purging that download folder? Oh, how are we, uh, what are we doing with this information? Who has access to this information? So there's a lot of, a lot of little pieces that can be handled through common sense, but common sense sure. is a superpower nowadays. So you really want to have a policy with your team and make sure that everybody's following that policy. No, absolutely. And, uh, you know, just to add to, you know, part of what we do here at Epi Compliance is, you know, we sort of have these policies and guidelines put together for our customers and uh, for those of you that are on the call uh, that are a customer of ours, you know, you can certainly speak to this as well. Um, this is sort of uh, what we do, you know, provide these guidelines, these policies and these procedures uh, uh, that you can implement at your practice. Um, but no, good stuff, Jose. Uh, moving on uh, <laughs> this slide, if you could. uh, uh uh, just because we're, we're on a, well, we like to keep these meetings 20 minutes. I know we're going on just a little bit over today. Uh, and it's, we, uh, apologize for the, uh, technical difficulties earlier, earlier, but, uh, Jose, uh, I was wondering if you can sort of chime in on the steps that, uh, should be taken to manage, uh, mobile devices, uh, effectively here. And, uh, um, if you can, uh, if you can speak to that. Absolutely. So it, this set, this these five steps can be easily split up into who is doing what, when, where, and how, right? Mm -hmm. So every practice should have either uh, a consultant or a compliance officer or a lawyer that they can, hey, what do, what do you think about this? Those are the people that are going to identify the risk management strategy. Yeah, I'm starting in the middle, but it's it, it walk with me for a hot second. Because once you figure out what that risk management strategy you in that section, you're going to figure out what the what the policy of the practice is. Is this just a brick and mortar, or is this is there a high level of telehealth component there? Sure. Is there a high uh, component of mobile providers? So they may not be working from home, but they're working from a lot of different places. You know, whether it's a um, a prison, and then the nursing home, and then the surgery center, and then the ALF, and the hospice, and then the office, and multiple offices. So. That risk management strategy is going to let you figure out everything else about this. Most of your employees are not going to care about any of these except for the fifth one. Let's be perfectly yes. honest, which is the training <laughs> section, right? So yep. uh, what you want to do is really figure out whose responsibility is what, because if not, this gets very onerous on just one person. And anytime you make any modification to your uh, business plan or your, strat your business strategy into business development, this could completely screw everything up. So you really want to just breathe in, breathe out. When you're identifying everything, that same section is assessing what the risks are with everything going on. So then you're just deciding what's the manner. Is uh, is anybody going to be allowed to use personal devices? Who's allowed to use personal devices? Well, if they're if the providers of 1099, for example, well, that guy can have that 1099 provider, radiologist, um, nurse, yeah, they can have their own device, but hopefully you have a strong BAA with them to where their personal device is also separated from their work devices, which is not always the case, but your BAA is is protecting you there. And that's where this kind of thing really comes into play. Then once you're once you've developed everything verbally and and uh cognizantly, then you just want to write it down and then you're just training the crap out of it with your employees. Right. You, you, you know, and it's, it's again, common sense is a superpower. You'd be shocked <laughs> if you didn't, if you don't go over with them, they're going to find a way to break it every single time. I mean, it is wild. I mean, I have, I've had some employees are like, oh, well, we didn't text it. We used Facebook Messenger. Right. Oh, oh, what are we doing here, guys? <laughs> oh, well, we didn't, we didn't text it all to him. We texted one piece of it. Then we emailed another piece of it. And then we did, you know, so it's just like, all right, well, if everybody can access the text and the email from the same cell phone, cause they didn't have to log in, then it's still on the same device, the same ease of access for people that shouldn't have access to it. Right. So, uh, you know, so it's just making sure that you can, you can think faster than your employees can come up with clever ways to get around it. <laughs> like the sticky note on the mind. 
<laughs> the sticky notes. Oh god, the sticky notes are always a thing, man. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> For those of you that don't know, Jose also uh, he actually uh, conducts uh, security risk assessments for uh, practices, which uh, in some extent he'll actually physically uh, walk into the office and uh, you know it, he, he Jose goes through a checklist and and whatnot. But I couldn't. He's had some stories <laughs> where he's he's seen. Oh my uh, god, you know, stuff. Uh, uh, it's it's sticky it's notes wild. on it's the wild. monitor the patient health information might be laying in a not so good spot and yeah but that's why you're there though to uh correct those yeah. issues so yeah but, yeah exactly but uh moving and on I'll, and uh, i'll always say this the providers are always the worst about compliance yeah. because for them it's just a waste of time they just want to see patients they think it's an unnecessary, unnecessary burden and what they don't realize is the admin is trying to keep everyone out of orange jumpsuits, you know, like some people look good in orange shirts, but orange jumpsuits are a little bit different. Um, so, yeah. So for this slide, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory when you're leaving your de device unattended. Um, a lot of a lot of IT companies will go ahead and ask you during their setup. Hey, if we're going to be monitoring all your devices, how often do you want the automatic logout? There are some times that I've seen offices that are just killing themselves logging in because it's a 45 second or one minute sure. log out of the entire device so then you got to log back into the device and because the device went on sleep mode then you got to log back into the ehr or the billing software or whatever it is that you whatever um app you were using or program you're using that may be a bit too much but if this is for example a desktop that's in or a device that's in an exam room just being able to log out of the EHR and giving them access to nothing on the desktop is good enough. Just make sure that nothing is being downloaded onto that device. So, you know, nosy Nancy from church can't see if, you know, Susie's also going to the same provider or Heather's going to the same provider or Brittany's going to the same, you know, like you, you just don't have that problem. So there's a lot of different ways to, to treat this stuff. Um, it's again, it's just about common sense. And if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to Ray uh, or myself. Ray's, all, Ray's got a, a direct way to contact me. And I think on a weekly basis, he comes up with something to send to us where we just go and sit down and like, how did they even do this? So it's always, it's always entertaining. We're, we're always learning something conversation. <laughs> Yeah. <That's> it's, <laughs> There's always so. a new scenario. But uh, no, that's yeah. exactly what we're here for. We're here to help guide you through this process. And uh, that sort of leads me to the next slide, the solutions, right? So, um, you know, I know we kind of touched on this earlier, training, uh, prioritizing training, education, right? Um, that's something that we uh, can certainly help out with as well. Making sure that your staff are trained and educated, HIPAA security, HIPAA privacy, um, about mobile devices, um, about encryption, et cetera. All that, all those things are covered in our HIPAA security training. Um, Jose, if you'd like to maybe add your input or address some of these uh, 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 challenges. Yeah, here. I mean, uh, the main thing that I like to do if I have to do training with my employees or my team, which I have to do, I like to try to use things that are in the news right now. So luckily I'm in Florida, so there's always some knucklehead doing something. So I can use the news to go and be like, hey, well, did you hear about Dr. So-and-so up on, you know, out in Gainesville or out in Jacksonville or always Miami? Uh, what we can do is we can always use that example as a way to, hey, how did they do this wrong? Mm. Let's go over, if this is the scenario that we find ourselves in, how do we get around this? And there are some times that the fear of doing, of making a mistake is so much so that it actually hinders our ability to treat the patient. Sure. So uh, real quick, we had a we had a situation where our, our printer fax machine and scanner went down. So the uh, one of our providers wasn't able to get some of the questionnaires and information they needed to make a clinical decision with a new patient. And my staff was so concerned about how to get that information in a secure manner that they didn't realize what is considered PHI. So I was like, guys, why don't we just take a picture of the questionnaires? You just block out the name. You block out the date of birth. 
mm-hmm. and send that to the provider by text. There's no identifying information. The provider knows who it is. And if anybody looks at it, it just looks like a questionnaire. There's nothing to make any sense of it unless you know what you're looking for and you know exactly who that person is. So it was a way to, the staff was so concerned about security that they ended up sacrificing customer service and customer experience because they were afraid. You know, and that's one thing as well, where you don't you want your team to be aware of HIPAA security and try their best to not make a mistake. But we are human. So, you know, sometimes you've got to weigh the, hey, let's use this as a teaching tool. Let's go over this. Let's critically solve this after the fact so we can prevent it in the future, because I would I would prefer that my team is able to understand the goal and even if the manner by which we achieve the goal changes they still know what that end goal is so we give them a certain level of autonomy and independence that then allows for administrative level and management to or c-suite depending on the size of the practice to do the job you're supposed to do rather than being a fireman for 40 hours for nonsense which I'm sure that the office managers right now are like, yes, preach. (laughs) So you really, so it's it's really just, you know, it's not just scaring. Yeah. It's not just scaring the crap out of people about this stuff, but it's just like, Hey, look, you know, let's not do stupid stuff. (laughs) So, um, yeah. No, good points, uh, Jose. And uh, um, obviously, before we uh, conclude this, uh, I do want to express uh, our gratitude uh, for your participation today. I, um, like I said, Jose, he's, he's got a, a, just about two decades of experience in the healthcare uh, realm. And uh, obviously, uh, appreciate his input, uh, you know, working on the healthcare, uh, 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 you know, obviously practice side of things as well. And uh, um, if you guys do have further questions, uh, again, uh, I'm going to provide some links uh, to you guys in uh, uh, email as well. And there's there are also some information on the next slide. You can certainly reach out to us. We're, we're certainly here to help. A uh, couple of things. I always mention this at the end of the uh, webinar, but um, I know this was a HIPAA related topic, but um, just so everybody's aware um, or somebody that might uh, be here that's uh, uh, their first time. Um, as far as OSHA training goes, you have to, in terms of what the federal government's looking for, they want to see that you're trained and your staff is trained in this area within 10 day period of time. Um, if you haven't done your OSHA training this year, we do offer a free re- for, uh, resource for that, uh, epicourses.com. You, your staff can sign in, uh, take that course for free. You get a nice downloadable PDF uh, certificate at the end. If you're looking for something a little more robust, uh, you know, obviously today we were going over, uh, again, another requirement for this mobile devices and setup is uh, training and awareness. Um, We do offer HIPAA training uh, as well, online HIPAA training courses. We do have a bundle for that. That's our training program uh, where you, your staff can access and take those trainings online. Again, get a downloadable PDF certificate at the end. Um, If you're looking for something a little bit more robust uh, where you're looking for all the policies, procedures, um, the business associate agreements, the tasking, the training, et cetera, we do have a pro package as well. Um, You know, and if you're unsure, uh, again, feel free to reach out to me or Jose. We can always schedule a free consultation with you. Go over your needs and see what the best fit is for you. Um, but <clears throat> again, I appreciate you guys joining in. Uh, I know we went a little over today. And again, apologies for the technical dif- uh, difficulties. Uh, I do want to open the floor up for just a quick Q&A. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, please put them over here in chat. And we'll, we will do our best to uh, answer. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor uh, with quick questions. Anybody? Leanne, thank you for your feedback. She said our Epi conferences was very uh, beneficial. Awesome. Tisha, I can certainly send you the PowerPoint. Um, We are working very hard to get these videos onto YouTube. Um, So for those that haven't joined or if you want your staff member to uh, take a look at these videos, we are going to put those up there. Um, I will make it a point to send you the uh, PowerPoint directly. Appreciate that. Still waiting to see if we get a question here. Okay, we got we got one here. So, Jose, you mentioned the importance of secure configuration for workstations and mobile devices. Could you elaborate on one specific aspect? 
of secure configuration that individuals may over overlook and what are those consequences that arise if neglecting okay it? um if i can get a little more clarity is this like a uh personal cell phone or is this a yeah they're business... talking it's talking about a cell phone more so of the or what well, okay yeah, I would say more more so the Eltel, uh, cell phone, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so then I would definitely say first things first, uh, you never want to use a personal cell phone for work, in for work, anything. If you must do it, make sure that, again, you're limiting the exposure that you personally have. So what I mean by that is use the phone as the hotspot because a lot of the, uh, I mean, I think for the last 10 years, droids have been able to do this. I don't know how often, how long Apple's been able to do it. So probably like six in regards to how uh, use them as a hotspot, as a mobile hotspot. And then your your laptop, your tablet can then do all the work that you need to do from a mobile area. If you're working from home, you probably want to do the exact same thing because I know a lot of people still uh, still work from home or I have some of these um, office managers that take their home, work home with them. So you don't want to be doing that on the on the same Wi-Fi as you know your daughter or your son are doing their TikTok dances. So make sure that again that it's a little bit more secure so that way you decrease the opportunity of a mistake you know, of a HIPAA security breach, because that in and of itself can be a little bit more or a lot more complex, depending on what happens there. So something like, hey, you know, someone hacked into my device because they spoofed on my kid's laptop, you know, something along that line, or something even as simple as, hey, I was in a car accident. My phone, I normally don't have it locked. So anybody has access to my cell phone and there's information on there, you know, like that, that in and of itself can be an issue. So the setup I would always say is do something that is easy for you and difficult for someone else. So something like a fingerprint, because most cell phones have the fingerprint scanner. I know a lot of the tablets do as well. So have that so that way they can't even log into the device to begin with if it's a work device or has PHI on there. Um, next you just go and, and from there you have it set up in different places. So maybe you're using a Dropbox that stores the information be that you move from mm -hmm. the, um, move from your download folder into the Dropbox. So then that way you're good to go there and nothing's on the device. You want to use your, your personal devices and your work devices as much of a as a dump device as possible. So when I mean by dump device, I mean, there's nothing on there. It's just got speed that it can log on to any app or any program where that's where all the information lies. I hope that kind of answers the no, question. I, I saw, I think I saw one, another yeah. one pop up there. Yeah. Well. This is from Mr. Rios. He was asking, uh, he said, are we supposed to have our employees uh, sign a document for using mobile device? Uh, what should that document contain? So you don't want them using any device, honest, any of their personal devices. So this, so the answer should be no. If they are going to use a personal device, there's only going to be certain people that are using a personal device for work purposes, right? Like I said, it may be your 1099 providers that are working from home or from multiple locations. Um, it may be certain nurses. Um, yeah, so on a mobile device is a must. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean in my, uh, my mental health practice, we've got seven different laptops four of which are logged out at all times three are for when a crucial employee gets covid or something like that where they have to work from home so it absolutely is something to where you just want to have uh it prepped and ready to go on that so you have them uh, you have your IT having remote monitoring, your passwords, your IT malware, and even you can even restrict what kind of applications and websites someone goes onto on those devices, just like if it was a desktop. So if you want to go and say, hey, look, they can't get onto Facebook, they can't get onto Instagram, they can't get onto Pinterest, like this thing is only going to be going into my EHR and my um, my Dropbox for whatever reason or my, you know, uh, my radiology program or whatever, whatever, you know, perhaps eForce, you can get onto that website, but that's it, you know? So it's something to where you just want to be able to, on the admin side, 
foresee any of the nonsense that somebody could come up with to limit the practice liability. I hope that kind of answers your question, Oscar. He had mentioned, uh, he said they'd like to know to have, uh, if we need to have our employees sign something. Um, no, nah, I mean, realistically, like I said, like if it's, uh, it's more about training. If they've done their HIPAA security training, they already know that they're not supposed to be texting PHI to anybody. You know, um, they already know that they shouldn't be accessing PHI that has nothing to do with their work, you know, so they, you know, so there's no reason for them to be looking for, you know, a college football, a collegiate football player that got hurt from a different location at a hospital. Hmm. Uh, Shan's about six years ago. Um, oh, so, yeah, yeah. So, Jocelyn, I, I hope you weren't just joining in now. We we started the webinar at one thirty five. Um, but appreciate you being here. And, uh, I think that's going to wrap up, uh, our Q and a, um, again, I appreciate everybody uh, that was able to attend. And, uh, again, apologies for going over a little over, but I thought this was a very engaging, uh, uh, subject today. And, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm appreciate your participation. Um, again, we do these webinars weekly every Tuesday from 1.35 p.m. to 1.55 p.m. Eastern Standard. Um, next week's topic is going to be a HIPAA security related topic. And uh, we're going to be talking about facility access controls. Uh, in particular, um, we're going to be talking about um, faxing. And I know that was mentioned earlier, but yeah. um, we're going to we're going to talk about that some, especially, you know, if anybody here's a practitioner that might be leasing a copier or a fax machine. Um, this wow. is going to be very, very uh, important stuff for you. So I uh, hope to see you guys there. Uh, and again, we are going to be sending links out uh, as well uh, for you guys to be able to register uh, for next week's webinar. Um, and if you guys need anything, uh, please feel free to reach out uh, to me directly um, or you can contact the uh, Epi compliance phone number as well. Um, so Again, Jose, I appreciate your time and uh, hope to have you no, on a, you. a few more of these webinars and uh, um, everybody else have a great, great Thanksgiving and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Take care, guys. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Bye.